Uh, we're trying to gather everybody around, but I mean, that's the main reason that we're doing this. So keep us together at this time, give them a little bit of hope, uh, show a little bit of technique, whoever can show technique. Sometimes some of the guests, they can show technique, but they can give a good speech, you know? Uh, For sure. On behalf of uh, Tom and Amir, I'm sure they agree with that. So I want to say thank you and Michelle to be here. And, you know, like Tom said, whoever have any questions, whoever wants to know uh, any particular uh, position or any question to Professor Danny, please make it on the chat. So make it easier, make it concentrated. And then I think Amir, Professor Amir, you there? Yes, Amir is right there. So he'll, he'll filter it in. All right. Thanks, Pita. Awesome. For be there, chills. Thank you, guys, for be there. Thank you very much. Set up another camera. Oh, so <laughs> you want me to start now, or 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 how do you how do you want to? Well, I, I'm sure the, uh, Tom is gonna be looking your pretty face, so you can start it right away, so he doesn't get overexcited. <laughs> You know that. Okay. You know that. Um, yeah. So um, I have like a couple of positions that maybe we can go over a little bit. But again, if anybody has any questions, by all means, you know, I think we got a first question there. First question is who cuts his hair? You know who cuts my hair? <laughs> what? She cuts my hair. <laughs> you know? But even though I need a, I need someone to let me borrow some hair because I'm, I'm losing already from the top and from, from, the, from the front, you know? So... I wish I had, you know, pretty hair like Tom and, and Professor Bui over there, you know, so I can have some. Jose, Jose Pita has plenty to spare, bro. That's I've been asking him, but he, you know. <laughs> from him, I get something else from. The hair is, is another thing. I want him to keep his long locks there. Dude. <laughs> All right, so I got, I, got a, I got two cameras up so we can get, like, better angles if need be. Um, so one quick position. Um, one of my favorite parts is always taking the back. So I don't know if you guys mind, but I, I like to show you guys how I, how I normally take the back. We'll do like one or two submissions from there and maybe like a pass or two if that's okay. Sounds good? All right. Let me know if you guys can't see so I can adjust or whatever, okay? So the way I normally take my back is normally from side control. But um, a lot of times we end up in, in side control here, right? And normally we always have side control this way. Normally people want to what? They base up and they kind of shrimp out, right? That's the normal way. As we get up higher, like more advanced, we have a tendency, or at least I see what the tendency is, and normally everybody rolls out, and they lift up their hips, and they open their legs really wide, and then guess what? I'm back into the crow's guard, right? So instead of fighting it, right, and, and, and making them do what they want to do, I kind of give it to them of what I want them to do, because the end result is, I always want to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven steps ahead of, of, of your training partner, your opponent, right? So as I'm here, right, and I have control, what I like to do is my hand, I like to bring it underneath the arm, right? So instead of being over the head, I want to be underneath the arm. So the same thing, right? I still have the side control position, but I'm kind of setting him or her up to what? To roll so I can take the back. So from here is I like to take the back, I like to get side control. I start on the hooking and I start what? Opening up what my elbow, the elbow as closest to the hip. I start flaring it up to my hip. The reason because now they think, oh, you know what? They're not holding me, you know what? Now is my chance to what? Rotate up. As they rotate up, remember, they have to get on their toes, they have to elevate the hips. So it's not just one step. It's multiple steps to get to where you're at. But I'm already thinking one step ahead. So as they rotate, guess what I'm doing? I attach my chest to the back, the top hand, right? I feed it through. So I'm already in a what? Seatbelt position. One key note, right, that everybody, I, I like to remind everybody is when I get the seatbelt, right, remember that your choking hand is always a hand that what? Goes over the shoulder. The other hand is always underneath what? The armpit. So what I do is my choking hand is always under the hand that's underneath the elbow. I mean, underneath the armpit. Key thing to remember, so you guys always make sure it's real nice and tight. From here, what I like to do is, I'm just gonna turn a little bit so you guys can see from the back. 
So I'm already in this position. I have my seat belt, right? She has her, the hips elevated. My leg, the leg that's closest to what? The shoulders is. As I come here, what? I bring the leg up and I do a wedge to wedge position and I bring it all the way parallel to the back, right? No space whatsoever, all right? From here, I'm not gonna rotate over. Right now, all I wanna do is once I have this position, my chest is to her back. From here, what I wanna do is I'm gonna sit onto my hip. That's it, right? Once I have this position secure, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rotate. I'm on my left hip, I have to make sure I go for my left hip, and I do an angle to my right hip. The reason being that I go from one angle to the other is that I cut from set port A to point B is a shorter distance, right? And I use her momentum and my weight to bring the opponent on top of me. And it's easier for me to hook my legs, right? So let's rotate again. So you guys can see how the angle goes, right? I'm here, I have my hook, I sit, right? Once I sit, look what I do, I bring the whole body weight up, I make her sit or make him sit, and look what happens, so easy for me to what? Hook my leg, I can sit up and hook my leg and get the four points for the back, or from here, what happens? I hook all the way over, and I curve my foot to have hip control, and I rotate over. Let me see if I can move over a little bit. So we ended up here. My hook comes in. If I want to get the four points, remember, foot inside, rotate over, other hook. I don't switch my hands just yet. All right? So right now we have what? The four points, right? If we want to get, let's say we're down by points or whatever, and we want to get some points, go for the submission right? Or if not, if you're more of a submission holy person, we're going to go for a straight submission right now. Uh, any questions so far on, on this part right now? Anybody need to see it over? Good? All right. So, no. All right. Turn again. Rotate over. All right. Right here. Okay, so let's go for a submission from here, right? Instead of placing my foot inside what I have a tendency to do is what? My foot goes all the way over and I place my foot. Remember, I put my heel facing out and my toes kind of curl on the higher part of the hip. The reason I like to curl is because now it's harder for her or him to move the hip around and have move, movement of the hip. If I just leave it like this, she can still what? Scoot out and take the whole body up from that control, right? So the reason I come here now it's harder for her if she tries to hip out, hip out. I still have control to what? Bring her back inside. All right, so always flare your heel out, pull your toes down, and kind of hook it, right? Always keep this hook active. Okay, so my favorite submission, right? My favorite submission is the bow and arrow choke from the back. That's my move, right? From there. Everybody thinks that we have to do the bow and arrow from right here, right? We have to be in like a vertical position to actually finish the move. We really don't. We can, you can finish the move from many, many different locations, right? So we have the control, right? As I'm coming over, let's turn a little bit. Right, 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 right. Yes, there we go. Good angle. So look how I reach all the way over. My back is on the mat all the way to the other side. I have this control here. I can go for my points, but let's say I want to go for a submission. My, my top hook is hooked. My other foot is over my heel to press down. Or you can put your foot on the hip. It's up to you. There's no right or wrong, right? If I have my foot on the heel, I can really look. I can adapt to push away or push closer. From here, what I want to do is the hand that's underneath the armpit, I'm going to open up the lapel, and I'm going to feed the lapel, all right? The reason I'm at this angle is because it, it's a lot easier for me to what? Grab the pants, hook the leg. It's shorter distance, all right? So once I have the pants hooked, the way I like to do is my top leg, I bring it over the shoulder. Now, my leg that's hooked on the hip, now I can close it. And now I'm just gonna open up like an accordion, 
All right? Questions, comments? Good? All right. Anybody need to see it again or we're, good, or, or we're gonna keep on flowing through? Keep on flowing? We have a request for one more time, please, from Lucas. Oh, yes, awesome, all right. So, we started off on side control, right? It's kind of hard for the person to make them do what I want them to do with the on the hook here, right? Because it kind of stops them. So what I like to do is from here, I keep my chest down. Remember, head nice and tight. Hand that's closest to the head. Underneath. Now from here, I grab and I grab the bottom part of the shoulder. I use my whole body to what? Roll them up. Oh, wow. Now they think, well, now they think they're going to escape. From here, my hand, just I shoot it right down. And I hold. All right? I bring my leg as high as possible, and I use it right on the back, parallel to the back. I want to make it nice and tight. All I want to do is I sit. As I sit, now I turn the angle all the way over. As I turn the angle all the way over, my hook comes up over. Turn a little bit this way. Yes, yes, yes. Yep, yep, yep. Perfect. I'm here. Turn the angle. See how my foot's already dipped inside? Again, my, my leg on top of the heel, open the lapel, feed, grab the bottom pants, bottom parts of the knee, hand comes over, lock it, and extend. Nice and easy, four points, you're in a dominant position, you're secure, it makes the other person start thinking, oh man, I'm already down by what? Three points for passing, Four points for the back control. You're up by seven zero or whatever is additional you had. Now you're making the person make a mistake and you're already ahead of the game. All right? Good so far? Professor. Yes, sir. Yeah. Professor, chill. Question. So, how do you. What's up? So, how do you persuade them to turn away from you and not want to turn towards you? From what I've seen, right? As we progress in belt, the, the, the beginners or the, the people who haven't had that much experience, they tendency have to what? They shrimp by what? Pressing up and shrimping away, right? But mind you, they're fighting so much to, for you to what? Not get the pass, right? They already, you already got the pass. The higher level girls and guys don't give up the pass and they have a tendency to either go turtle or go away. Why? Because you only get half a point. You only get the advantage. You never get the three points for the pass. So I'm justifying on that to get, this, to get the back control. Or, or you force them by what? The hand that goes, come over here. The hand that you, no, I'm going to run the head. Instead of being around the head, I'm going to start off by what? Being underneath the shoulder, right? So I'm not going over here. I'm going behind the shoulder. So I use my shoulder, my whole body to what? Remember, we keep our, our, our chest attached and I drive myself over her or over him and it makes them turn sideways. Good? Good, Professor. Thank you. We have a question from Emilio and uh, yes. you can jump in here from asking it properly. Uh, he's asking, um, to complete the choke, do you bump the hips or is it all in the arms? I don't bump the hips. All I do is I, I bring, and I tell this to my students, a lot of times on chokes, elbows are close to the body, right? And I bring them to my hips. A lot of people do chokes this way. I like to bring it, especially for the bow and arrow, is my hand that comes here, the, the choking hand, what happens? I bring it, what, towards my hip, right? So if we're here and here, right? Or if I'm grabbing here, because especially for what? The bow and arrow, I like to grab the pants. This one, the top choking hand, I don't keep my, my elbow flared out because what happens? She can push up and the head can come underneath, right? So come underneath again. My elbow goes over the shoulder and then I bring it to my hip, right? And then my opposite hand, the hand that grabs the knee, again, I bring it back and I bring it towards my hip. Like an accordion, you know? You know? Beautiful. I love your accordion impression. That's amazing. Emilio, does that answer, does that answer your question, Emilio? Awesome. I've been practicing that one. 
Beautiful. You got it. Thank you so much. All right. So uh, one more little submission from, from the back that I, I like to do a lot too. All right. So we have what? Side control ready. And we have the seatbelt, right? A lot of times it might be a little difficult to even take the back from here, but there's still submissions that we can do from, from this position, right? You're already in dominant position. Remember, back to chest, back to chest, back, back to chest, chest to back, nice and tight, right? Once I'm here, I don't let my opponent move. But my hand is already in a dominant position. Remember, my hand is underneath the what? The armpit. What I like to do is now, instead of facing like, like a T with her, you know, she's parallel this way, and I'm facing this way, my body's not going to turn, and I'm going to go the same side as her or the same side as him. So from here, I turn my body, and now my head is pointing the same angle as her head. And the arm that's underneath, guess what happens? I go all the way through. So turn a little bit. All right. So we start off here. I turn my whole body, and my arm goes all the way through. And it's in the back of the head. Okay, from here, you, we have the arm triangle, but we're going to change it up a little bit, right? We're going to grab what? The Ezekiel, right? The Ezekiel from the back or a variation. Again, my hand comes underneath. I put four fingers inside my lapel. Don't forget, that's the only time where you can put your four fingers inside a lapel. You can't put it in the opposite. You can't put it to your opponent. You can put four fingers in yourself, always. Again, nice and tight. Four fingers up, four fingers inside. From right here, I make a fist. My hand comes underneath the neck. From this position, now I go back to both knees parallel to her, and I go for the submission, right? So four fingers inside, comes around the neck, and squeeze like a sitting, right? Or if you want to add a little bit of a, what I used to call it, DJJ, like Professor Tom, we grab it. We make a fist and wrap it around, all right? If you guys don't know what DJJ is, it's called douche jujitsu, <laughs> but it's perfectly legal in a tournament setting. Oh, right, Professor? <laughs> all right, so real quick, we'll just follow through real fast, is we have back control, nice and tight, but for whatever reason, you know what, they're defending me here, I don't feel secure to what take the back end, but I don't want to lose the position though. Now I want to attack, right? I'm up by whatever it is, or you know what, I'm down, and my only chance is to attack. Well, this is the opportunity. Chest comes down. I feed the hand. I feed the hand all the way through to the back of her neck. Turn a little bit. Right? I feed it all the way through as much as I can. I grab what? My four fingers inside my lapel. Now. If you want to do the DJJ again, I make a fist. Bring it all the way over. Now, my knees, you see how I'm still facing towards your head? I want to go this way. Chest comes down. All I want to do is I want to bring my elbow to the mat and I lift the other one. So in this position here, the hand that's on top, I keep that elbow down and I raise the hand that's inside the lapel. That's the key. The key to that choke is just Lifting always the hand that's inside the lapel. All right? Good to go? All right, let's go to the next one then. So, a couple of things that are in passing, right? So, let's just focus on, this is just the way I like to pass. There's many ways to pass, but this is just my preference, right? Whenever I pass, I don't like to pass standing up. I feel like I'm not as mobile or I'm not as tight when I bend my knees. Again, my hips are nice to the mat and I'm able to flow this way, left and right, okay? So the same thing, whenever I pass, I'm nice and low. Why? Because I can start leg dragging, moving the other leg or going to the other side. So we're gonna start off in half guard. Traditionally, when we do half guard or knee slide is what? We grab what? The lapel, we grab the arm, and we, we, we do our knee cut, right? But lately, what I've been doing is I, grab, I like to grab the top leg, 
I feel like I have more control holding the top leg. With that being said, my hand, right? Let me just turn this one. My hand, I like to grab the bottom part of the lapel, right? Right by, I like to grab right in the beginning of the armpit just because I like to put my fist inside. It's a little bit uncomfortable. It makes a person move a little bit and it agitates them a little bit, you know? I grab the top leg, again, my elbow. Never forget, I don't flare my elbow up. Why is that? Because if I do, they can always what? Grab my elbow down, break down my posture. So I, what I do is I, I grab the pants and I bring my elbow inside and I defend on this part, okay? Elbow inside and I grab what? The lapel, all right? And remember, here, I'm always on my toes. Never forget, when you're, when you're doing that position, I want always toes. Don't be on your heels. Don't be on the top of the foot. Always on your toes. Why? Because you got to be mobile, right? Especially when you're passing, you have to be relentless. Never just, if you got to pass, you got to be ready to go at any point in time, all right? So, we're in this position. There's only two options that they can do. They can only defend one shoulder or the other shoulder. They can defend both. Okay, they only have one option to do one or the other, but I have, an, I have a reaction or an action for each one, right? So let's talk about if I'm in this position and I hold the top, the bottom lapel, I have my, the pants ready, what are they going to do? They're going to what? Try to defend this shoulder, right? And hold this shoulder down. Why would I try to face this side? If she stiff arms me, she can always hold me. I outweigh her by 40 pounds. If she stiffs on me, I could, she can always hold me. But guess what? There's always a little gap by the hip, okay? Let me know if I need to change my angle so, I, so we can move a little bit, okay? So again, we're here. As I'm passing, right, elbows nice and tight. All I need to do here is the, the, the knee or her leg, I just have to what? Drive it down, okay? From here, I drive it to my hip. Because from here, what I'm going to do is, as soon as I drag it down, the knee that's inside, I cut out, and I drop my hip to her hip. All right? One more. So, nice and tight. She has, what, the position on my shoulder. She's holding me. Again, I have the, the control of the lapel. I bring the, the knee down. All I need to do is drive my knee out drop my hip and now I keep this position and I open up and I slide out from here turn toes always on the mat come up and then in. you guys want to see it from this angle or do I keep that same angle I, I don't know if that was a good angle or not good angle okay All right, now let's talk about if they go to the opposite shoulder, right? What? So we're here, same thing. Now the opponent, what, goes to this shoulder. Okay, same thing. What I'm going to do here, instead of what, pushing the knee back, I'm just going to keep it there. So what I'm going to do is what? Sometimes it's very hard to turn the hip. Why? Because your opponent has the hook here on the leg. So it's hard sometimes to move, right? If I keep my position low. Why? Because they they're using the same hook that we did for the back control. They're using it for the inside. So from here, same thing what I like to do is, but the difference is, what I'm going to do is I'm going to elevate my hips up. Just a little bit. The reason I elevate my hips up is it's easier for me to what? Drive my hips now to the mat. Okay? So same thing. I elevate up. I drive my hips out, take out my leg, and now I'm standing up, same thing, the head is on top of the shoulder, open the lapel, I mean open the knee, either I can put my head down on the opponent, or from here, once I pass the hip, knee on belly, right, into whatever choke, or knee on belly, hold the position for your points. Questions, comments, concerns, 
See it again? Again, one more time, man. There's so many fantastic details uh, that okay. I think, you know, even, even I've seen you and I've had you do it on me countless times. All right, so same thing. So we're, we're starting up again from this position. Again, make sure when you guys are here or girls are here, don't be afraid to be in this position, right? Never be afraid. Always have confidence in yourself. Your professors are showing you the proper technique. Believe in your technique and believe in yourself, and I guarantee you, you will be successful. So especially when you're here, never forget, you, are the, the, you have to be dominating here, right? You're in this position. I have my grips. I'm ready to go, right? I'm, I'm ready. Once I initiate the move, remember, I'm going to what? Elevate my hips up. So I'm going to take off my hand from here so you guys can see. I'm going to elevate my hips up. Why? Because I create a little bit of space, right? The moment that I initiate to go, that's my turn to what? Drive my hips out. Okay? This is my base now. What I'm going to do is look. I went to wipe the leg over. Up. Open. All right? Once I open, either you can put the head down, come in, or you what? You bring the knee on belly up. The reason I bring the leg inside is what? It defends the knee from coming back, right? Because the whole key to pass is not surpassing the knee. Whenever you guys pass, anybody? Yes, the knee and the legs is very important. But once you get to the hip, nine times out of 10, you will get the pass. So always focus when you're passing is attaching yourself to the hip or surpassing the hip. Once you surpass the hip, that's the key. Sounds good? All right, anything, anything else you guys wanna review or anything else you guys wanna see or, or go back to? I think that's good, Dizio, cause uh... You know, they're, they're, I know Marco is just jumping in and Marco likes to drill. What's up, Marco? Uh, Marco Prado is in the house. Some of us, like, uh, like I said, you know, they, they don't have the gi, but uh, I mean, if you just want to show one more time just how you lock your elbow over there, that's a pretty, pretty good grip. Okay. So, yeah, I'll do it this angle. Is this angle better so you can see the elbow? Okay. So, again, you have many, many different passes from the same setup right here, right? I have what? My hand in the lapel and this hand that goes in the pank rib. Don't ever try to flare out your elbow, right? Because from right here, your opponent is going to grab the elbow, bring it down, and now I'm bringing down the whole posture. So once you're here, regardless if they have the leg locked or they just have it open like, like some type of knee shield or something, my elbow, what I want to do is bring it down towards my hip, and I like to bring it on the inside of the foot, right? So I'm always on the inside. Why? Because, look, I can use my whole forearm, my whole elbow to defend the leg. If I'm just right here, she still has pressure. Look, inside what? Spider or lasso. Once I'm here, it's harder for the person to what? Lasso or inside grip or anything like that, right? I'm, I'm able to what? Isolate the position. So now she's really defending by what? the inside leg, and it's all about limbs, right? If I can isolate one limb, isolate the other one, guess what? She's only, or he's only defending me with one, and it's my whole body against that, that one part of her body, all right? When you have that color grip, when you have that color grip, Professor, yes, um, are you holding her there, or are you actually, I tend to pull a little bit and have them like, bring them up, kind of, what are you doing there when you're holding with your left hand her, her color grip? That's a very good question. So that one is specific, specifically for that one, I try to tender, I, I have a tendency to keep them there or pull them away because okay. I don't want them to be too close to me because what I, my hip or my body is going to what? Her hip on one angle, on one, on one uh, pass. Oh. On the other one, the one that I bring up this way, uh huh. The one that I'm here and what I have, I open up, I bring her in a little bit. 
Okay. But once I pass the knee out is when I'm opening up. Of course. Okay. okay. Thank you. So it's a push and pull, push and pull. But very good question though. Perfect. Uh, what other? If I maintain the grips all the way through on both variations, yes. I don't change my grips. I know I don't believe in changing grips so much because that's when you give the opportunity to your opponent or your training partner to leave. You have to be confident in your grips. Once you have that grip, maintain it. Right? It's very hard to break grips, especially once you start passing. I feel like when you start moving grips around and all that stuff, there's that one split second or that one millisecond where your training partner, your opponent, has the opportunity to escape. But very good question, though. No, anything else? No. Again, like I said, my, the details that I give that I've seen is very, very small, but it's always helped me out. And like I said, I've always learned from, from, from Professor Tom and Professor Buyo. Basics is what wins. Basics is what counts. You know, I know a lot of people like the whole flashy stuff, and I'm not saying it's bad, and I'm not saying it's wrong, but I'm a firm believer that in the basics. Basics, 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 and you evolve those basics into your game or what you feel is comfortable, and then from there, you just start progressing and things just start opening up. If I may, just for a second, um, just if I'm going to put this on YouTube, uh, for you guys that even were here and watched this, man, this is something to go back and watch again because there are so many amazing details in there that, that may, depending on your level and where you're at, you may not see all those things, but I, I'm sure a lot of us are seeing like so many just amazing details that, that you're showing. And I, I promise you this works. I promise you, he's, he's, he's the master at this and not that he needs any more credentials, but that bow and arrow choke, for instance, I, I watched him win Brown Belt Worlds, six matches, five of them bow and arrow choke, you know? So he knows what he's talking about. He's amazing at this. And I, man, I appreciate all those, those passing details as well. Fan friggin' tastic. Those are awesome. Thank you, Professor. Thank you. I, know, I know it's a little difficult because I know we're on Zoom and stuff like that. But by all means, you know, anybody can ever ask me a question on here or, you know, either call me or message me, WhatsApp or, or Instagram. Like, I, I want to be an open book because I've had four fathers in front of me that have been an open book. And I know people say, oh, there's no such thing as a stupid question or whatever, but there isn't, right? There's only stupidity if we're not asking the questions. Don't ever be afraid to ask a question or even myself uh, that, that now I have the opportunity to be a black belt. I have asked questions to lower belts too. We all learn from each other, you know, because at the end, you know what, that white belt or that blue belt, pearl belt, brown belt might be doing something one way. And you know what? I got to try it. Let's see how it works for me. And I adapt to it to what, what I like. You know, I've learned so much. You know, obviously, Professor Bull has been my professor for many, many years. He's taught me so many things and I've adapted his game into mine. I've asked Professor Tom questions, you know, and man, like sometimes I feel like, they might think, man, these was bombing me again. And it, but it's like, it doesn't end, you know, it doesn't stop. It's just ever changing. And if I never, I did, if I didn't have to ask those questions, guess what? I want to be able to teach the way I teach to my students and then my students evolve. And then it's just like a, a, a full ending circle, you know? So, Professor, we have uh, we do have a question that just came in on. Yeah, chat. I mean, I can, I can. If we have time, uh, would you be able to show us a sweep from half, bottom half, please? Oh, for sure, for sure. Uh, any specific part of the bottom half? Is it deep half guard, regular half guard? I mean, there's just so many things there. There's a ton, Lucas. Uh, anything in specific you're looking for, Lucas? Deep. Oh, deep half. Perfect. So. This is, this is actually the sweep. This is my very first sweep I've ever learned from Professor Buyu. Very first one ever, which has been my favorite one. From there, we have two options, right? L let me know if this is a good angle because it's kind of hard to see from here. Is this good? Okay. So... 
D password, right? What I like to do is I end up with in an E shield, right? Because I don't want the person to what, either grab my head, grab my lapel. So key thing I want to do for the entry is always defend this arm, all right? Once I'm ready to initiate the attack, remember, every action is faster than a reaction, right? So my knee is like the nail, right? My hand is going to be the hammer. So the nail goes through as the hammer goes through, and I elevate up, and I want to make sure my, my shoulder hits by the belt, okay? So as I come inside, I come in nice and deep, and I wrap my hand all the way around the waist, all right? Once I'm here, the tendency is your opponent's always going to push you back down. As the opponent pushes you back down, my bottom hand comes underneath. Turn the angle. Can you guys see from here? Okay, my hand goes all the way underneath by the shin, by the chin, by the shin, right? What I like to do is the hand that's around the waist, I go what? By the hamstring. And I feed it and I grab the, the, the foot, all right? From here, the hand that was on the shin, I like to grab on the knee. My head, always nice and tight, but by what? The quad. Make sure your ear is nice and tight. Key thing here is look at my bottom legs, okay? I don't just open and come around, right? I have to do this simultaneously like a windshield wiper. One. So we're here. One. Right? From here, top leg, the leg that just came over, this is the key, is the leg that's here, look, I just have to drive it back, drive it back, drive it back, and what happens is it turns her knee out this way, and it shifts her hips to move that way, right? People think this has to be so strong, and you don't. It's all about the angles. I turn the hips. Now I shrug my shoulders, and I drive my leg back, and I come up, okay? So one more time. Knee shield, right? Defending this arm. As I come in, my hand wraps around the waist, as she pushes me back down, my hand that's on the bottom goes underneath the shin, right? Hand feet, grabs the what? The bottom of the foot, hand that's on the shin goes down to the knee, ear to, to the quad, windshield wiper, I drive my leg back this way, right? I keep my toes on the mat though, look at my foot here. I keep my toes on the mat. The hips are facing outward. All I have to do is bring my other leg back in. Again, my keynote, look at this foot. This foot's not flat. I like to put my toes on the mat because look, now I can drive up and I get down, right? So focus on the foot. The angle of my foot is not like this because now I have no momentum to push. As long as I curl my toes down and I'm always on my toes, Regardless of whatever position I'm in, now I can always push to come up, as opposed to here, that I don't really have the leverage to, to come up and push. Uh, can I show the, what, the, the angle of the feet? Okay. So this one, is this way better for the angle? Give us th thumbs up, Anthony. Is that what you're looking for? Yes, that's okay. what he's looking for. So. I'm in this position here. Look what I'm going to do. My legs come over, right? Look at how this foot, my angles on my toes are down. This foot, I keep it on the mat, and I drive this back as much. You see how the knee initiated the knee move towards the hips, and it makes you go this way, all right? From here, since her hips are already facing that way, my bottom leg, I keep the toes down. Why? Because now look. I initiate the roll. Good, better? Okay, and, and don't forget, you have the option to go the other way as well, right? So from the one, that same move, same grip, same everything, you have the option to go left and right, left and right. Good. 
We have some people practicing the move. Prado, Peter. Opa! They're doing it. Eso. They have partners, yeah. Ah, the Peters. There we go. Um, can you can you make a point of, for instance, something I used on that last one you just did, uh, which is, I guess, I think they call it old school, uh, is if the person's much bigger than you and you can't drive into them, you could just take that bottom foot out and, and switch your hips to belly down and they fall anyway. Yes, yeah, I, I, you can always use the, that bottom leg as a lever, like as a hook to come underneath and just swim through, you know? Uh, don't, and also, you know, you play with it. Remember, you, and I always focus on, on the hip. It's all about the hips, you know what I mean? So use your feet and use your, your the, even when the person could be lighter than you or heavier than you, the lower you go, the more attached to the hips you can be, the easier the sweep's gonna be. Focus on the angles whenever you go. It's angles, it's not really, it's not the, yes, technique helps, strength helps, but angles, it's where it's really at. That's when you're gonna fine tune everything. You're gonna see how the pass is gonna be easier. The sweep is gonna be easier or the, the, the takedown is gonna be easier. Why? Because you're, you're approaching everything by the angle itself. That's just my, my thought process. I love it. I love it. Can you uh, quickly, just to reinforce that ear to the hip, once you have all your grips set, why that's so important? Uh, so, what are they do to make that uncomfortable for you if, if you don't do that? Okay, so first things first, and I'm going to demonstrate it. Remember, this, this sweep, you can use it in gi and no gi. Very important. Remember, you can always use it for both. A couple of things real quick. So, first things first, right? If my head is far away, she has an opportunity to what? Cross face means one. She can come down. No, cross face, cross face. Left, left, right hand cross face. No, 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 no. Left, not that one. The other one. Left. Here in front. Here in front and cross face my, my face to come up, right? So remember, wherever your head goes, your body goes. That's one. Two, if I'm far away, as this is mostly happens in no gi, but it could happen in gi, right? Once my head comes around, there's an opportunity for a dar choke. So give me a second. Inside, my head's far away. Now she brings me back inside, and she can finish me off with a dar choke, right? So... Always, always keep your head nice and tight. They can push your face. Let's go back to DJJ, how Professor Tom has always showed me. She can, he can always what? Push my face down. There's no bad thing about pushing someone's face down. But don't do it to your friends because they can do it to you. <laughs> Fantastic, man. I appreciate that. That was, that was great stuff. Hopefully everybody got some, some good points out of that. And by the way, Technically legal is, is now what we call it instead of DJJ. Oh, technique. Okay. So let me rephrase <laughs> it. We're going we're gonna to name it new. I just call it legal stuff. So. <laughs> we actually here in, in the monument, we call it patriotic with the Patriot. Have you seen the movie, the Patriot? Of course. Right. So all the red British soldiers are all lined up and this is how we fight war coming. And that dude stand behind the tree with a hatchet and blood all over his face. He's like, yeah, it's war. Right, so yeah. that's, we just call it the patriot stuff. Like it's patriotic. Okay. Right? Hey, you know what? We're not we're, we're not classified as patriotic then. Yeah, exactly. There you go. Any other questions, guys? Anybody else? Anything else? I I know he showed quite a bit. There's a lot to wrap your brain around because that was some amazing stuff. Diesel, man, you're a genius, bro. Um, I, I love every single moment of of what you had to show. Not, not even kidding. Okay, good, good. I just, I didn't know if it was too much, too little. I know, like I said, it's very difficult to kind of articulate everything, especially when it comes down to Zoom. But again, if anybody ever has a question, ever, my phone line is always open. You can call me, text me, send me a message on Instagram. And I, I try to do my best to answer it. And if I don't have the answer, believe me, I'll go off and find it for you. And I'll find all my resources to, to get a better question, to get a better answer for everybody. And, and Michelle, I appreciate you very, 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 very much because without you, we couldn't, we couldn't experience this. So thank you so much for, for doing this for us. 
It's my pleasure. I love to get smashed by him with his yeah, knee sure. slides. Sure, sure, sure. She kicks He's going to be paying later. for it later. <laughs> you guys are awesome. Anybody else have any questions? If not, we're going to wrap up Taco Tuesday. Think on a mic. I think Marco might have a question, Professor. Okay. We'll give Marco one second here. Uh, just, I was just going to second what Tom said. Uh, when technique is so tight, like what Diesel was showing, it, it, it's so effective. I mean, I can tell you, I've, I've been rolling with Diesel for, for what, how long now, Diesel? Almost 10 years? Nine, and, 10 years. And, and I know what he's going to do a lot of times. And he can still pull it off because the positioning, the angles, the technique, the timing – it's so it's so sharp that that it's effective. Even when I know his move, you know. So what these are showing, he's not just showing it to show it. He's showing it because it works. It works for him, and you know, um, it works. It works for a lot of us. But you know, so that that's gold. I mean, that's nine, ten years of developing that move for him to show us today. You know, so I, I appreciate that. The, Oh, th thank you, me for the opportunity. Sure, that's uh, awesome. Pro Pro Professor Danny, uh, yes, I know you're huge. You're huge in, into uh, drilling. What percentage of your class will you call or, or, or you use as as drilling? I know that when you're getting ready for competition, you know I I know that you particularly drill more than when you're training just throughout the year. How much of the time, if you had one hour class or one and a half hour class, how much would you dedicate? You like to dedicate for, for drilling when you're going towards, you know, when you're getting close to the competition, those last four, six weeks before the, the competition? Um, it's a very good question. Um, but remember, like, we can't just base everything on competition, you know, because jujitsu is for everybody, not just for the competitors. So it's a very fine line, and I'm sure all the professors here can, can, can agree with me. You know, it, it's a very fine line on how much drilling or how much rolling or how much this because you have to make it fair for everybody, right? But if I'm just going to talk about a competitor aspect only, and this is a one-off because, you know, it's very hard to find or very hard to see that everybody wants to compete because not everybody wants to compete. But just as a competitor aspect, um, if it's for a class, you know, a class got to be – an hour and a half because, you know, you want to get a good 30, 45 minutes of, of drilling. And then, you know, you want to get some rolls time in, you know, uh, with that being said, before I used to be, I used to think, you know what, I have to roll six times, six times a, a week. And I have to, I have to train for two, three hours, four hours. And what I've noticed as I've gotten older and I'm not 20 years old anymore, I'm in my mid thirties, like, or later thirties, I feel more comfortable training three, four days a week if I can. And I drill maybe once a week out of those times. And, you know, I just open up to things and I put myself in bad situations, you know. But that's a very, it's a very tricky question to say, you know what I mean? Okay. But for a competitor, man, if you can drill an hour a day for twice a week and roll three times a, three times, uh, three times a week, I, I think that's more, more than enough, you know. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, since, you know, for, for everybody out there, since I, I, I don't hear many people asking questions, you know, when, when Professor spoke about asking questions, it, it's so amazing how he spoke about, you know, what they call basics and how he had four people that teach. That sweep that he taught, I learned it from Professor Lass. The Professor Lass learned it from Professor Buyu. And since Bujitsu evolves, there are things that I see like, am I, you know, I'm, I'm Roman Catholic and, and we have a way to teach the, the New Testament and the Old Testament and, and the, the church kind of goes around like that, right? And I feel like that's Jiu-Jitsu for Professor Buyu. We kind of, there are things that he taught when I was a white belt six, six years ago, seven years ago that I don't know where he'll pop out again. And the reason being, I think, is because obviously Jiu-Jitsu evolves. And so imagine if he taught the same thing over and over and over, the same thing that Chills and Danny learned so many years ago or years before I got there. So I think it's so amazing how you see that. I learned something that he taught so many years ago from one of his students, you know, from Professor Lass, and he learned it just, just the same way 
he learned it. So I think, you know, asking questions to your teammates, to the higher belts is so important and so nice because there are things that they learned many years ago that your professor, your professor Tom, or won't probably teach again another two, three years. Am I right? Just because you are just, you get to as evolving and they have to teach new things, you know, new things that are coming. So if you want to evolve, it's just like in class. You got to ask questions. Don't be afraid. Just ask questions. Get a purple belt, get a blue belt, get a brown belt and be like, hey, man, listen, how you do this, how you do that. And I, and I, and I promise you, you learn, learn, and learn again more and more and more. Just my two cents. I, I agree with that in, in 100%. And, you know, there, there's so much in jiu-jitsu. This, I, don't, I don't know how many moves there are, if anybody's ever even tried to count. But, uh, you know, me in particular, writing my curriculum. Oh, there's two moves. Writing my curriculum, right? I could, I could write a year's worth of curriculum uh, and never see the same thing. I could write, and honestly, I've written now three years worth or more of curriculum, and I have not really seen the same thing unless I purposefully do it, right? Um, so even as a brown belt, I would go to Buyu and I'm like, Buyu, this sounds silly. I'm a brown belt, but I need to know this white belt choke a cross collar choke or what are the exact details that you do? Because maybe that choke came up one time forever ago when I was a blue belt or maybe two or three times in 10 or 15 years. Um, but you know, now you've seen that, okay, this is part of my game now. This is something I want to get better at. And so even at a brown belt, you can't be embarrassed to ask questions. Right. And, and having the resources that you guys have now uh, is fantastic. Now, hopefully it's, maybe better but worse, but we all would have to go to Buyu, right? Everybody like, Buyu, 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 how do I, right? Now you have people, he has 30 black belts to ask and, and countless brown belts and purple belts and blue belts. And honestly, we were talking about this the other day, you can learn from anybody. You can ask a white belt, how do I do it? Fine, they may have little tips and tricks and things like that that, that maybe I don't know. So, so don't ever be ashamed or embarrassed to ask questions, man. I'm telling you, I'm, however long I've been training, I will ask anybody. I don't care. I'll ask Nacho. I'm like, hey, Nacho, I know you watch a lot of YouTube. How do I do this? Right? <laughs> but again, you know, just reiterating that. I, 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 I do the same thing too. Like sometimes I see Diesel doing moves that I, myself, I, I can adapt or choose or you, anybody, Pita, you know, there, I think like what Danny said is right. Uh, the moves out there, the knowledge is out there. Everybody can learn from everybody. It's just like a matter of the time that uh, somebody likes to play more bottom, more top, passing, chokes, submission, and that's the way that goes, you know. And and like you said, uh, um, it's it's hard to count how many moves out there because, you know, maybe the moves that you know I don't know, but I'll go for you and Dizio and Michelle and Emilio and any other students, you know, because they are particular on that specific point. Reason why we have this chat to show to people that it is in the end of the day, jujitsu, uh, but the most important part is like, we are on this like learning aspects of like how these your grips and Mike and Tom and everybody, you know? Amazing class, Danny, amazing class. Thank you so much. Oh, Snow, thank you again for the opportunity. Yeah. I Another thing I wanted to say, guys, is, um, you know, Tom, you mentioned it. You know, when, when we started with Buyo, uh, it, it was, what, like 10 of us in a class? I think That's the cute. highest belt was a blue belt when I started. And, you know, the, the level of, of information that we have today, you know, it, wow. is amazing. I mean, I roll with blue belts today that were at, at my – I, when I when I was at a purple belt level, you know, it, 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 and, and it's just, there, there's so much information that they're getting. The knowledge is just growing so much faster, faster, faster. And, and it's important that we take advantage of that. You know, I mean, when I see Tom, when Tom comes into, you know, visit or, you know, I go visit, I mean, I, I try to squeeze every ounce of information out of him. I don't care if he likes it or not. I really don't, you know, because I, I just want to absorb, you know, those, that experience. And, and like you said, you know, Jose, you know, Diesel, you know, I go visit him at his class all the time because his style, the way he trains, you know, everybody's got something to add, a little different beat. Um, we didn't have that, 
you know, when we started 10 years ago. You know, there was 10 of us. And what Buyo taught that day was what we learned, you know. And, and YouTube wasn't really, a, you know, it was out there. But, you know, it, it, it's, not, it's not something that we really, you know, were hungry for back then. You know, we wanted to train. We wanted to learn from each other. So, so guys, take advantage of it. You know, don't don't just look at a belt color. You know, you see a blue belt that's been there for a year or two. Trust me, there's a lot of information that he's gathered over that time from different people that he can definitely teach you something. Be prepared, Mikey, because he already told me, Amir as well, uh, they are coming for our annual December meeting. So we're going to have uh, all the crew coming from Colorado, Michigan, Philadelphia once again. Every December we do like the – the annual meeting, and that's awesome because that's the perfect opportunity that we not just learning jujitsu, uh, exchange knowledge, but also uh, meet new students and new friends, you know, and extend the BJJ family that we created, you know. And uh, thanks to you, thanks to Diesel, Marco Prado, big supporter, Tony Cueto, Jose Pita, Kayla, you know, all of you guys, you know, everybody that's here all the belts everyone you know that's why we are here and that's why we we grasp that amount of technique because like you said before we didn't have that and you go on youtube you can watch like an hour youtube you can become a black belt in two days you know but having us it's important because hey tom how the hell you do that move like two weeks ago, three weeks ago? I guarantee you're not going to remember that on YouTube. You're probably going to scroll down, scroll down, scroll down, and you're going to get lost. Or these are your pass again. Can you do it to me? And feel that pressure, that grip, that tightness, you know, that he have. And that's added up, so on and so on. I am very grateful to have such an amazing people, you know, to train and to talk and to chat, you know. I'm just blessed, you know. That's what I... Thanks, Danny. Thank you, Professor, again. He's a, one of my favorite ones we've had, man. No kidding. This was amazing. No, thank you again for the opportunity, and uh, happy single de Mayo for everybody, you know?